good morning today. So we have over today we have a mayor with us who has over 10 years of experience in frontier and emerging equity derivatives in the market space, both buy side and sell side experience. He has worked under funds that were awarded a lot of awards based on the, the work that they've done. He's also had experience working with um, Morgan Stanley, which is one of the top companies in the world. But other than that, he started his own company called Abi, which is on a mission to make Pakistan much more financially inclusive. Let's welcome Omer on 10 Minutes of Hiding Wisdom. Hi, Omer. How are you doing today? Good, thanks. I'm in awe. How are you doing? How have, good. How have things been, especially with the pandemic and everything? How has your company been? Go- has your company been going? How how has the change been? Yeah, it's been. Uh, so I mean, we started amidst the pandemic. We started uh, at least forming the company last year uh, in around October. So it's uh, it's been interesting. I was in New York at the time. My co-founder was here in Karachi, so we were doing the whole remote experience of trying to build the company <laughs> together, getting all the, the regulatory approvals in place and setting up all the legal structure, hiring, strategy, uh, getting clients on board. So we did everything from a remote standpoint uh, across the world, but uh, here we are and it's been, uh, it's been a difficult experience, but it's been fun at the same time. So the transition was definitely smooth for you because you didn't have to move from something that was completely in person to something that was remote, which is, I guess, good for you because a lot of companies specifically had a lot of issues moving towards something that was completely remote. So I'm glad things worked out for you. So just curious, what gave you the idea as in like what? As in, like, where did the idea for this company come from in the first place? I mean, I understand that Pakistan is not financially inclusive. People do not have a lot of savings and everything, and they prefer immediate gratification as opposed to deferred gratification. So just want to know where did the idea come from? Yeah, look, I mean... It- It's something that exists across different markets. And my background, having been been investing in these different emerging markets, we've seen this as a problem point for a lot of the middle class uh, and lower class, to be honest. And uh, we hadn't seen a proper solution for it here in Pakistan. And my co-founder, Ali, uh, had had personally seen a lot of friends and family constantly asking him for money uh, before uh, their paycheck came through. And he's like, listen, I think this would be something that could be interesting over here. So we started exploring that uh, one one thing, if you look at any good company when they launch, they they focus on existing pain points and then uh, try and figure out how to solve it. So this was something that we said: is this a pain point in Pakistan? And after meeting with uh, numerous people and companies, we came to the realization that it is. And so we wanted to really solve that issue uh, through a digital solution, and that's kind of how it came to came to uh, our minds to say this is a, a way for us to create better financial inclusion in the country and for people to learn uh, a better way of being hopefully being able to save and and access capital when they need it so how do people exactly save through abi right now like what exactly does your company do uh, like through digitization like what exactly does your company actually provide people with that people didn't have before yeah so right now people tend to get paid at the end of the month So, uh, and some people that cycle can be 30 days, it can be 40 days, sometimes it's even longer than that. And the problem is in the middle, uh, because savings rates are so low in Pakistan, and because inflation is so high as well, I mean, you think about your basic food prices, tomato prices, onion prices, for example, in the last uh, little while have gone up 20, 30%, and even in one month. Um, And so the problem is your purchasing power of that, of your money decreases as time goes on, but you've worked and you're not been you're not been able to access that money and your value of that money has gone down. So what are we providing? We're basically coming in and saying, look, you've worked today, so you deserve to be paid today. And it your savings is coming in in the form of you being able to access your money that you've earned today. So that you don't have to wait till the end of the month. And when by the time you get to the end of the month and the prices of your food or everything else has gone and gone higher, you uh, have actually saved on that inflation that's happened in, in your costs. So that's one aspect. The other thing is also in terms of uh, billing cycles. So you think about it, your electricity bill or your uh, school tuition for your kids or anything else that has to do with billing, uh, your cable service, for example, all that happens at a time when you haven't, uh, got, haven't, paid, uh, haven't gotten your salary yet. 
So if you haven't got your salary yet, uh, then you that's when you're going out and trying to find other ways to be able to pay that off. With us, we're saying you don't need to do that. This is a way of you savings. You don't have to pay late penalty fees anymore. You can do that. You can directly take money out that you have earned and you, you'll be able to pay that off much quicker. I can definitely see how this would be so useful because I think in Pakistan specifically, um, a lot of people go for the committee system where they have to like pitch in money and the neighborhood ladies come and take the money and everything. So I can definitely see why this would be sustainable in the long run, specifically because I think it would provide people for a means end of income, which would help them like not have to wait for the money that they had worked for initially. So that's definitely a wonderful idea and I can definitely see the company growing. So thank you for creating something specifically for Pakistanis where they can actually save their means of income, which is something that's very important because a lot of us don't really have that income especially saved especially during hard times because then we're like okay where do we get the money from especially when something strikes and we're just like okay we weren't prepared for this so i can definitely see why this would be useful so Amir, as an like you've had such a wonderful experience with working with companies in the u.s um you've started your own, your own company now so i would love to hear from you regarding um any advice that you have for job seekers out there specifically in how to get that dream job that they've always wanted like what would be some key advice that you would have for them in order for them to increase their chances of getting that dream job? Yes. Look, I mean, be courageous and get your foot in the door. If you are someone who is passionate about what you do, uh, the best way of showing that is is having your foot in the door and showing that internally in the company. And even if that means going in on an unpaid internship, for example, even if that means uh, going in for less salary than you ideally want. Uh, at the end of the day, if you show passion and you're able to deliver inside a company that you truly uh, want to work at, uh, then that's, I think, the most important part of this. So don't get bogged down on the short term and say, okay, uh, it's not the right amount that I want to be paid or it's not a, a, the ideal job that I want. But if it's in a company you really want to be in or it's in an industry or space you really want to be in, your passion will show that and you will be rewarded for that over time. So uh, get your foot in the door. Do, do whatever you can to get your foot in the door. So how do you balance though, as in like, there are people that have a lot of responsibilities on them on one side that have to make monthly, in, like they have to pay for their electricity, everything. And then there are people that want to pursue it, their career, which why not pay a lot? So how do you balance the two in order to find the right stepping in where you can actually be like, okay, I'm pursuing something that is my passion. That's not paying a lot, but then I have to make my, like make sure that I can pay for my house or stuff like that. Like, so how do you find the balance? Yeah, I think constant hustle. I, it, I I understand it's it's hard, especially for some people who have responsibilities, etc. So try and set time aside, for example, with uh, apart from your your other ways that you need to make income to be able to to meet your bills. But other than that, set some time aside with the company that you want to work at or the place you want to be at and contact someone who's there and start building that relationship. Start spending an hour, for example, a week with that person. Just even if it's sending them an email saying, hey, I have these ideas around uh, how I would be able to help or areas I'm seeing what you're doing over here and this is something I could improve on or this is something interesting I've read. It shows your keenness and passion towards uh, the, that industry or company that the other person is in. So then you're slowly building up that that relationship. Relationships are the most important part. As when someone else on the other side who is looking to hire someone finally, then you'll be top of mind. Like, okay, this we were looking to hire now and this person's been keenly engaged with me on a weekly basis. And sometimes they won't reply. Most of the time they probably won't reply. But at least you'll be top of mind whenever there is a, whenever there is a position open. So I'd say one thing is That's true. don't have any ego. <laughs> Don't have any ego about it. Just keep on pushing and it'll work out in the end. That's true. I think a lot of people specifically when they reach out to someone and they don't get a reply, they take it personally when it's just like people are busy. Everyone has something going on with them. So you just need to stop taking things personally. So thank you so much, Amir, for sharing this. Um, it was lovely hearing, for you, uh, hearing from you regarding your company. And I can definitely see your company going places specifically because it definitely has a mission and a purpose to help people. Our time is up. It was a pleasure having you as a guest, Amir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manal. Thank you. Thank you.